so a very good morning after understanding how depletion layer is formed in a pn junction what are forward bias and reverse bias characteristics of a diode what is dc resistance and what is ac resistance in today's lecture we will derive the expression for depletion layer width and the barrier potential both uh let us now see uh, let us see again how this depletion layer is formed and how to derive the expression for the depletion layer width if you look at a pn junction as i told you in the last lecture that a pn junction is formed just by putting a p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor together here if you look in the figure i have assumed as if the donor concentration on p side and n side are the same although that is not the case then uh, i have already explained that in the depletion layer there are only positively charged donor impurities on n side and negatively charged acceptor impurities on p side and there is nothing like electron and hole or mobile carriers are not there in between so this is a space charge layer or depletion layer if we plot basically the charge concentration space charge concentration so here since it is negative so that is why it's negative on this side and positive on this side qualitatively if we plot the electric field due to this the electric field here goes like this i will derive the expression for electric field also and then there is a barrier potential barrier potential here it has been assumed that barrier potential here at the end of the depletion layer is zero and then this is bb that is the barrier potential it is not hard and fast rule that we have to take this to be equal to zero here only if we can take zero here also and then we can find out basically b1 and b2 on the two sides and find out the value of bb so there are several ways of deriving this expression but please understand that it's very simple the depletion layer width all the space charge width is basically the sum of the depletion layer width on n side and p side both and the barrier potential here from this figure i have written the potential here at x is equal to xn that means from this point onwards the potential becomes constant so this point corresponds to x is equal to xn so our boundary conditions here will be that at x is equal to xp the potential is equal to zero but whatever is the potential at x is equal to xn is basically our barrier potential otherwise in some textbooks you will find that they will find out the potential in this region in n region and p region both and then they will add the potential to find out the barrier potential but this is also very simple the electric field and potential can be obtained by well known gauss theorem in electrostatics or poisson equation poisson equation is a del square b is equal to minus rho upon epsilon 0 that you already know in one dimension it can be written as d square b over dx square is equal to minus rho upon epsilon 0 which is also equal to minus de over dx because electric field can be written as the negative gradient of the potential so you all know basically these expressions very well now coming to the charge density distribution on either side of a junction the value of charge density rho is minus e into na yani is acceptor carrier concentration from f is equal to minus xp to 0 and then on the other side of the depletion layer that means on the p side it is plus e into nd nd is basically the donor concentration so this is the concentration from x lying x from 0 to x is equal to xn that means on p side the donor concentration are uh, the the charge per unit volume is minus e into na while on the n side it is plus e into nd remember na and nd are the densities so they are per unit volume so that is why they amount to the volume charge density uh, then now we can integrate this uh, if you don't write for e then we can integrate it twice to find out the value of uh, the potential 
but here we are interested in knowing the electric field also so the electric field in p region is e is minus e n a upon epsilon 0 plus c1 you can see the equation this is the equation so here i am going to solve basically this part of the equation minus and minus cancels out so de over dx is minus e into n a upon epsilon 0 if you integrate it once for the electric field so e comes out to be minus e n a upon epsilon 0 x plus c1 the electric field is assumed to be zero in the neutral p region for x less than minus x p since currents are zero in thermal equilibrium we all know we have in the last lecture we have seen that in thermal equilibrium once the depletion is formed the current is equal to zero so electric field is equal to zero at x is equal to minus xp that means on the boundary of the depletion layer on p side there is no electric field so if we make use of this boundary condition in our electric field expression so we put it here and calculate the value of c1 which is the constant of integration c1 is now minus e into na into xp so we go back to our electric field expression the value of e now becomes equal to minus e n a upon epsilon 0 x plus xp you can see yourself how electric field changes with distance it changes linearly that is what you saw on the last page that electric field changes linearly as you move towards the origin because if you put x equal to zero then the electric field becomes now negative it's minus e into n a upon epsilon zero into the value of x p we do the same thing for the n region also so if you look at this expression for e here we do the same thing for n region also so our electric field now becomes equal to e into n d upon epsilon zero into x plus another constant term integration c2 we again do the same thing similar to x is equal to x p minus x p the electric field equal to zero here at x is equal to x n the electric field will be equal to zero so we get back the value of c2 and this gives us the value of e as minus e into n d upon epsilon zero into x and minus x so we get two different expression for the electric field one by exploiting the information about the p region and other from the information about the n region if we put x is equal to zero in equation four here or equation five both of the equation will give us the electric field at our metallurgical junction and we can now equate the two so I put x is equal to zero here so it becomes now minus e n a upon epsilon zero into x p put x is equal to zero here it becomes now minus e into n d upon epsilon zero into x n minus and minus sign cancels out epsilon zero also cancels out we are left with n a into x p is equal to n d into x n this is also very important equation nd na are the number of acceptors per unit volume xp is basically the width of the depletion layer suppose area of cross section of our semiconducting material is a so then this here this side here we can multiply it by a and divide it by a if we multiply it by a xp into a becomes the volume the volume of the depletion layer multiplied by the acceptor carrier concentration will be the total number of acceptors in the p side of the depletion layer per unit area so number of negative charges per unit area in the p region is equal to the number of positive charges per unit area in the en region so that is that was the beauty of basically calculating the electric field expression in the two region so we now get the relation between xn and xp now we go for the second integration second integration now b is equal to because e is equal to minus del b over del x so the potential b is minus integration e x dx in the p region so in p region you can see again in the p region the electric field here is a minus e into n a upon epsilon 0 into x plus x p 
so if you look at this expression here the same thing has been written here it's e into n a upon epsilon 0 into x plus x p into dx integrated e into n a upon epsilon 0 a constant quantity so we can take it out of the integration sign this is x square by 2 plus x into x p and there will be another constant of integration a c3 now how to find out the value of c3 we put that b is equal to 0 at x is equal to minus xp. So this information will give us c3. So c3 is now minus e into na into xp square by 2. We go back to our potential expression. So our bx now becomes equal to e na upon epsilon 0 x square by 2 plus x into xp plus c3 and c3 is e into na upon epsilon 0 xp square by 2. Now we will not go blindly that we will do the same thing for n type material also and finally equate the two. We will end up with the same result what we got from the electric field. Okay, so here if you combine these two expressions here, so it is E into Na upon epsilon 0, uh, factor of 2 is missing. In fact, 2 should also be here. So if you take out 2, it is x square plus xp square plus 2x plus xp. So that is x plus xp whole square. A factor of 2, please include a factor of 2 here. So this is the expression for the potential uh, in terms of xp and Na. Now we go back to N region. So in N region, we again do the same thing. We write down the potential V to be equal to be integrated uh, from uh, 0 to xn. The limit of integration will be 0 to xn. So e into nd upon epsilon 0, xn minus x dx. And uh, uh, we don't have, sorry, no limits. We have to put a constant of integration here. So it's e nd upon epsilon 0, xn x plus minus x square by 2 plus a constant of integration c4. IS are done for the p region. We can again take a, a, the boundary condition that b is equal to 0 at x is equal to xn and find out the value of c4. But then we are not going to get anything new. What we will do in the previous equation, we put the value of x is equal to 0. So if we put x is equal to 0 in the previous equation for p with c3 known, and here we will put the value of x is equal to 0 in this expression also, and that is how we will calculate the value of c4. So at x is equal to 0, this equation will give us the value of uh, the potential at x is equal to 0, that is our constant C4. But from the previous equation, if you put this value, it comes out to be E n a upon 2 epsilon 0. It was x plus x p whole square, x is equal to 0, and therefore it is x p whole square. So once we know the value of this C4 here, we will now put this C4 here in equation number 9. So now our Vx becomes e into nd upon epsilon 0 xn x minus x square by 2 plus a constant e into na upon 2 epsilon 0 into xp square. Now this is the general expression. So what we will do now in place of calculating c4 here, that is the only trick in the whole game. Now to find out the barrier potential vb, we put x is equal to xn in this equation and calculate our barrier potential bb. So that is e upon epsilon 0 nd into xn square plus n a into xp square. So this way we can find out the value of barrier potential. But if you look at equation number 11, unfortunately, the expression for the potential xn plus xp is our, our uh, depletion layer width. So bb is also written in terms of xn plus xp. But we got an equation by comparing the two electric field. That is, that was equation number six. Xp is equal to nd upon na into xn. So first we substitute xp here and find out the value of xn. So you see the same thing has been done here. Uh, this is e upon two epsilon zero nd xn square. I have taken out. Okay, in place of na, na is na. And in place of xp, I have written xn square is out. So this is nd square upon na square. So one na cancels out. nd we can take out. And what we are left with, 1 plus nd upon na. 
and 1 plus nd upon na becomes equal to na upon na plus nd so if you rearrange the terms the value of xn here becomes equal to 2 epsilon 0 bv upon e na upon nd 1 plus na upon nd to the power of half similarly either you put this xn value here and find out the value of xp or you substitute here for xn and find out the p uh, you can write down the expression for xp just by interchanging na and nd you can see here this is na over nd is now nd over na and in place of 1 plus na over nd and 1 over nd plus na is the same so that is why it is written in this form by knowing these two expressions for xn and xp on the two side of the metrical junction we can now put them together to write down the depletion layer with omega and omega is now equal to x plus xp so it is 2 epsilon 0 bb upon e into na plus nd to the power of half and then under root of nd over na plus na over nd so this is basically the expression for the depletion layer width you can see yourself that depletion layer width not only depends upon the barrier potential it also depends upon the acceptor carrier concentration and donor con carrier concentration on both sides of the junction in fact bb also depends upon na and nd so we can say the omega depletion layer width essentially depends upon the donor and acceptor concentration on both sides of the metallurgical junction now to understand it uh, more we now generalize it for a n type or p type semiconductor so suppose we have a n type semiconductor so in n type semiconductor what will happen here that nd is much much larger than na if it is a n type semiconductor the number of donor impurities has to be taken as much much larger than na so if you put this here so this omega depletion layer width is now 2 epsilon 0 bb upon e into na so depletion layer width depends upon or it goes as 1 upon square root of donor concentration that means smaller the value of donor concentration larger will be the value of depletion layer you will come across several pn junction one side of a junction is very heavily doped one side of a junction is very lightly doped and there you will assume that entire depletion layer lies on to the low doping side the region is obvious because omega goes as one upon under root n larger the value of n is smaller will be the value of omega so again the width of the depletion layer decreases with the increase in doping concentration and also the ratio of the depletion layer contribution on p side and side are also basically the ratio of donor concentration and acceptor concentration that means larger the donor concentration is smaller will be the value of the depletion layer so this result is very important and you will see that we will make use of this result to understand the different characteristics of a pn junction diode exhibited for zener diode and tunnel diode so you have to remember along with the derivation you have to remember that omega goes as one upon under root n and n is a donor concentration after this uh, depletion layer uh, derivation uh, we also have to understand uh, junction capacitances junction basically in fact if you draw a equivalent diagram then we have to find out different elements that we have to incorporate in drawing a uh, equivalent circuit diagram of a pn junction diode so pn junction diode also exhibit a junction capacitance there are two junction capacitance in a pn junction one is called diffusion capacitance it is also called storage capacitance and other is called transition capacitance or depletion capacitance these are the two capacitances which are very common uh, in understanding the behavior of a pn junction diode Diffusion capacitance or storage capacitance comes to picture when the diode is forward biased. While depletion capacitance or transition capacitance is useful when the diode is reverse biased. Okay, you will see further. Diffusion capacitance, it is the capacitance as I told you. 
which comes to play when the junction is forward biased and caused by the injected charge stored on outer of the transition region in the forward biased junction you know about now a junction when the depletion layer is formed when the diode is in thermal equilibrium there is neither the movement of electron from n side to p side nor the movement of holes from p to p side to n side but when we increase when we apply the forward biasing forward biasing helps the carrier the holes from n p side to n side and the electrons from n side to p side to move so therefore there is a change of a charge with the potential and you can recall the simple definition that this diffusion capacitance is a dq upon db it is the rate of change of charge with the voltage we can write it in a slightly better form it is now it is we have, i have multiplied it by a constant gamma here gamma is called minority carrier lifetime so right now you consider it as a time we will discuss about it in the next unit so then this becomes a gamma and this dq upon tau is written as basically uh, here as a di that is the current divided by db so it is a gamma it upon rc rac is the ac resistance so we can write down that in fact you have to understand why diffusion capacitance so when you forward bias the movement of charge movement of holes from p side to n side takes place and similarly the movement of electrons from n side to p side takes place and that happens with the with the change in voltage so rate of change of a charge with voltage is called capacitance so it gives rise to a capacitance in fact for a forward bias pn junction we can write down two type of a diffusion capacitance one is a, a diff, a, due to the injected electrons from n type to p side so i have written it as cdn diffusion capacitance because of the electrons and other is cdp injected holes from p side to n side so both will contribute to the capacitance separately so cd is now equal to the sum of these two so diffusion capacitance increases as the forward bias increases because injected charges on both side increases so it's very simple you can visualize you can understand it also that as you increase the forward bias voltage more and more electrons and holes moves from one side to another therefore the diffusion capacitance are changes are increases as the forward bias voltage increases the other is a transition capacitance transition capacitance is basically the capacitance of a diode uh, in the reverse bias side it occurs due to the presence of uncovered positive and the negative charge on both side of a junction here before i go further uh, uh, let me remind you that during the reverse biasing the current is because of the movement of minority carrier electrons on the p side and the minority carrier holes from the n side to leak from one side to another and that is why we call it as a leakage current so now you can uh, recalling this fact you can see now this simple picture will help you to understand that suppose we have a applied voltage to be equal to br r stands for the reverse bias voltage and when this is the situation this is our depletion layer it is xp and xn on this side the donor concentration or we can say the volume charge density is e into nd on this side and e into na with a minus sign on this side now when i change the reverse bias voltage from br to br plus dbr what will happen now the depletion layer width will increase so same thing has been done here on this side the depletion layer width changes from xp to dxp and similarly on this side it changes from xn to dxn suppose the charge covered here is plus dq dash and the charge here is minus dq dash and this is happening when we change the voltage reverse bias voltage by an amount to be equal to dbr so what will be our transition capacitance our transition capacitance will simply be dq dash 
upon dbr that means when we change the value of reverse bias voltage the depletion layer width increases and the uncovered charges in this dq dash divided by dbr is basically the transition capacitor now what is dq dash dq dash is e into nt into dxn so that r it is e into na into dx p here so we can write this as so therefore this can be written as ct can be written as e into nt into dxn upon dbr the value of xn is known to us xn is a we have already derived uh, the value of xn while deriving the depletion layer just now so if you make use of that expression for xn xn is 2 epsilon 0 bb plus br in place of bb i have written now bb plus br because when we apply the reverse bias voltage the barrier voltage increases it becomes bb plus br but when we apply the forward biasing it's the other way round the barrier voltage the reduces so that is why it is written as bb plus br and by using this we can find out now ct ct is nothing but e into nd into dxn upon dbr remember this information has been used here so this is the expression for ct here so ct is now equal to in place of dq dash it is written as e into nd into dxn upon dbr so if you make use of this you can find out the value of ct that is transition capacitance and uh, we all know that as reverse bias voltage increases the depletion layer increases so therefore the capacitance c is epsilon 0 a by d by simple physics if it is a parallel plate capacitor c is epsilon 0 a by d more is the reverse bias voltage more is the depletion layer width so omega is the depletion layer width so omega will increase so the capacitance will come down otherwise you can make use of this expression that we derived the ct is equal to uh, this one this also tells us that the value of ct will uh, uh, will decrease as the reverse bias increases because br is sitting in the denominator so mathematically also you can derive the expression for transition capacitance to prove that ct decreases with increase in reverse bias voltage otherwise without this also this is the simple law that as reverse bias voltage increases the depletion layer width increases and depletion layer width is nothing but the parallel plate capacitors separation so that increases so the capacitance come down uh, before i end uh, basically the this today's lecture i am going to tell you uh, a very important uh, uh, information that how to test a diode suppose you are given a pn junction diode uh, and how to test in the laboratory because most of the time what happens is if you purchase a pn junction diode from the market on the plastic case case itself the 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 the, the signature of basically diode symbol is marked there so in fact you have an arrow and the symbol so from there you can find out basically which end is p side and which end is n side but uh, for many of the diodes or even if you are making use of that diode for a longer time sometimes that uh, uh, that uh, symbol disappears so in fact if it, that symbol disappears so here i am going to share with you a very simple way of testing a diode in the laboratory or in your home also if you have a ohm meter or you have a multimeter multimeter means a resistance measuring device so if you look at this you have an arrow so this is positive this is b type semiconductor and this is n type semiconductor because this arrow indicates the direction of the flow of a current you are given a pn junction diode you don't know which end is p and which end is an n what you do you first take one end and connect it to the positive terminal of your multimeter or ohm meter and other end as negative measure the resistance it will give you a small value i have written it of the order of 100 ohm now you change the two terminals of the diode and again measure the resistance and now you will measure it to be very large i have written is 1000 mega ohm so either this will be the situation or maybe it is other way around if you measure it like this then this will be the resistance so this simple way of measurement of resistance 
will give you the fact that this n is p and this is n because if when it is forward biased the resistance is very small and when it is reverse biased it is very large so i will suggest all of you to give a special mention to this testing a diode and when you will get an opportunity to visit the lab then you can do at your own you can test yourself that which end is p side and which end is n side because it's a very important practice to visualize basically these components in the laboratory also so in the next lecture i will talk about another important uh, junction that is called metal semiconductor contact so thank you for today's lecture स्टाफ शेयर कर दिया एंड मीटिंग फॉर ऑल